The previous lesson covers electric motor dynamics and incremental motion velocity profiles. We're going to start with the trapezoidal velocity profile. And if you recall, it has this shape where we plot the motor speed versus time. We have constant acceleration followed by constant velocity and then another period of constant acceleration back down to zero velocity. And the time it takes to complete this motion is TC. For an equal parts trapezoidal profile, we'd have TC over 3 is the end of the first period, and 2 times TC over 3 is the end of the second period. The maximum speed in this case, where we have equal parts, is equal to 3 times theta d divided by 2 times tc, where theta d is the total displacement that's desired from the motor. Now, we're going to work a problem where we have a motor. So here's the motor shaft, and well, actually the armature. And then we have the armature, which has moment of inertia JA, and on the other end of that shaft we have a load torque, tau sub L, and the motor, the electric motor, is putting in tau sub M. So for this example problem, we are given the moment of inertia of the armature, 250 gram centimeter squared. The torque constant for the motor, 68 milli newton meters per amp. And the load torque. So this is the torque opposing the motor torque. So that's 15 milli newton meters. Well, it's the torque opposing the motion. So we have here theta m. The direction of the motor torque is generating a positive displacement theta m. This video just goes over uh, an example problem where we want to find the maximum velocity and the torque required in each of these three segments to get this desired motion. Oh, I haven't uh, written... Anyway, the desired motion, we have some desired displacement of the motor shaft. And then also we're going to calculate what the maximum current required by the motor is. Now for part A, we want to find the maximum velocity, omega max, and the motor torque in period 1, 2, and 3. So this is section 1, 2, and 3. And this is in order to rotate the motor shaft 10 revolutions. in half a second. And this is using equal parts writing quickly so as not to bore you too bad, but it makes it kind of messy. So using equal time trapezoidal velocity profile. That means e each of the three portions of our velocity profile take up an equal amount of time. And we have here the motor shaft rotates 10 times, or 10 revolutions. So 10 revolutions is 20 pi radians. So our value for the desired uh, displacement is 20 pi. And the time we have to complete that is half a second, so 0.5 seconds. Now from this picture we can calculate omega max. It's just 3 theta d divided by 2 tc. So we have 3 times 20 pi divided by 2 times 0 0.5. So we get 60 pi radians per second. And oftentimes Motors are spec in RPM, for example, the maximum speed. So we could convert this to RPM by converting revolutions 
I'm sorry, radians to revolutions. So there's one revolution for every two pi radians. And then seconds to minutes. So there's 60 seconds per minute. And that gives us that the maximum speed, sometimes the screen goes dark. And I know it does in the recording too. Okay. The maximum speed is 600 RPM. Now, in order to get the, the torque, we need to find the acceleration according to Newton's second law. The acceleration is just the change in velocity. So we go from zero velocity up to omega max divided by the change in time. This is for constant acceleration. So we have Tc over 3. So that is 60 pi divided by 1 over 6. Right? Yes. Tc is 1 half and 3. Okay, 60 pi divided by 6. So this gives us 90 pi radians per second squared is our acceleration. Now, according to Newton's second law, we have that the sum of the torques is equal to the product of the angular acceleration and the moment of inertia. So we have the motor torque in the positive direction, load torque in the negative direction. Tau m1 because we're finding the torque for this first period here. Call it tau m1. So tau m1 minus tau l is equal to ja times alpha. So we get the tau m1 is 90 pi times 250. And this is in mm, okay. We have radians per second squared, and 250 is gram centimeter squared, so gram dot centimeter squared. Now let's convert that to something standard. So we have 1,000 grams per kilogram, and for every meter there are 100 centimeters, and we want to square that. And to this we are adding tau sub L, and that's 15. Um, millinewton dot meters, and we want to get that into newton meters. So there, are, for every newton, we have one thousand millinewtons. Okay, and adding these, we get zero point zero two two one newton meters, which is twenty two point one millinewton meters. Okay, so there's the torque required to accelerate this from stop up to omega max, 22.1 millinewton meters. Now for the second period, tau m2 minus tau l is equal to zero. There's no acceleration, we have constant velocity. So we just get that tau m2 is tau sub l, which is 15 millinewton meters. And the third portion, tau m3 minus tau l is negative j a alpha because now our acceleration is in the negative direction. So tau m3 is negative j a alpha plus tau l which is 7.93 millinewton meters. And if you notice we have, we're dealing with direction here, so we have a, the sign is important. The fact that tau m3 is positive means that in order to let this shaft decelerate at the desired speed, we have to apply, still continue to apply a positive torque. In other words, if we didn't apply any torque for this deceleration phase, it would decelerate more rapidly than we want because of the load torque. So that's why this is a positive torque to get this negative acceleration that we want. Be and that's just because the load torque is uh, so big. It's bigger than what's required for the acceleration. The load torque is bigger than the product of JA and alpha. I hope that's clear enough. Now the second part of the problem is to find the maximum current draw. So the armature current max. And we know f 
for a DC motor that the torque is proportional to the current and the constant here is our torque constant so and now we just need to uh, find the maximum torque in order to get the maximum current. So we have tau max divided by kT and according to what we found in the previous part tau max is 22.1 millinewton meters and kT is 68 millinewton meters per amp. So that gives us that the current draw is going to be 0 0.325 amps or 325 milliamps if you prefer.